Hey, what's happening, guys? We're back. Still playing around with our, our anti-bark device. And you guys had some great uh, advice yesterday. The most obvious one is obviously, yeah, the buffer. I know. I'm looking for something else. I'm looking for an interesting way to implement this. The buffers, yeah, it's obvious. But, uh, for instance, good old Barry down there in Florida says, instead of using a transistor buffer, which I was not even considering a transistor buffer, I was thinking of an op-amp buffer, he says, why not use a uh, optocoupler as a buffer? Okay, there's another way to do it. So we're going to take a look at a couple of those things today. Again, here is our circuit. Here is the schematic for the circuit, since I, I didn't draw one for you guys yesterday. So this is just a this is a five 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 timer. Pin eight our VCC pin goes you know directly to VCC. One goes to ground. Two is connected to six. Four is connected to eight. There is a two hundred ohm trimmer potentiometer connected between pin eight, seven, and six, with the wiper going to pin seven. Pin five our control voltage pin is not connected. It's really not needed in this case. Yeah, you could ground it, but I've never had trouble doing it this way. So pin 1, of course, goes to ground. Pin 2, which is connected over to pin 6, our, our uh, threshold to trigger. We have our timing capacitor here, 220 uh, microfarads. Pin 3 is our output, and pin 4 we've already talked about. So this is giving us a frequency of somewhere in the uh, 20 kilohertz range. But the problem I was having is when I attached a little speaker to it yesterday, it was dropping my frequency down to nothing. So I asked you guys for some uh, solutions or suggestions, and you came up with some, and we're going to take a look at some of them today. All right, so step one, I think what we're going to try here is we are going to put... A little load resistor this is 10 ohm I don't have an 8 ohm resistor 10 ohm will be close enough I'm sure this will this will act like our load so we can put that in there and then check our frequency okay so that don't look that don't look terrible interesting but you can see the frequency did not drop off so it's, it's definitely not the load that I'm putting on which I didn't think it was because I've done this with 555 timers a great deal so that's a 24 we're gonna take it back down to about 20 which is where we want it look at that ringing let me get you in here a little closer. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. So that's what happens if we just put a little load across it, which is what kind of what I expected to happen. Not much of anything. All right, so we also had another suggestion to use a piezo crystal. Okay. I've got one right here. Let's get it uh, set up here. Like this. And then I'm going to need a little wire. Let me go to ground here. Green for the ground. It should work out okay, right? All 
I was getting some sound. There we go. But you hear how low that is? Like, I should not be able to hear that. Let's get our... Yeah, now we're down to... Oh, it has no idea. It's just completely lost its ever-loving mind. Check it out. Hi, caramba. So the piezo is not the uh, is not the answer. The answer is going to be a buffer, obviously. Um, somebody else said we should put in a uh, a capacitor. Yeah, remove the DC, no doubt. Let's see what we got here. I got a couple capacitors sitting here. We'll take a look and we'll see what they do to the signal. Man, I'm like blind trying to read this. This is 0 0.01. So we'll take... A 0.01 microfarad capacitor. We'll stretch that across, and what it should do is it should remove any DC component from the signal, right? Is it going to? I doubt it. I doubt it's going to have any effect at all. Can you guys hear anything? Because I can't hear it. But I'm looking here and I'm seeing 18 kilohertz. I, I don't know if it's making any sound though. Oh, that's nice. I just knocked everything out. Gets back in there. Okay, so 15. Yeah, but I don't know if it's making any sound. <laughs> okay. Transistor buffer. The 2N2222, which go Oh, <laughs> don't jump right out of my hand there, didn't it? Which goes emitter, base, collector. So we will put the base like so off of uh, pin three there. So our base will be driven by the output of the 555. As soon as I can get all these lined up correctly. There we go. Now for the collector. I'm just going to throw a 10 ohm resistor here. Not ideal. But it should be okay. Alright, next up. Emitter. To here. And where's my ground?
Once again, I don't hear anything. That doesn't mean anything. Let's uh, see what we can see. If I can get my fingers working. Yeah, that seems to be working pretty well with the buffer. You can see it's looking relatively solid. We still got that ring there, which I'm not terribly worried about at the moment. Frequency is relatively stable. So the buffer is probably the answer. But which one? Should we try an optocoupler as a buffer? Should we try an op amp as a buffer? Or should we stick with a transistor buffer? What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Also, just give you guys a heads up. It not work like that in the real world. Anyway, so that's where we're at. We're going to go to step, I guess this would be step two tomorrow, maybe step three.